So, we've got to go to Cumbran. We're taking the MG4 today, but one thing I have noticed since I've been working at Nathaniel Cars is I don't feel like I'm getting the most out of my EV driving, so I've brought you along as the EV expert. Where am I going wrong? What can I improve? Right, so first of all, we, before we set off, we'll set the car up in the most efficient way. We'll go to eco on the drive mode, and I find when you're driving normally, we use adaptive energy recovery because that will allow the car to use its sensors and stuff to work out the most efficient level to put the regen at. So to get you that little bit more range. Right, so that helps me out as and when it, it's appropriate. So it, it reads the road for me, basically. Yeah, that's basically it. So the other thing we need to do before we set off is we'll reset your trip. As you can see, this car at the moment is averaging 3.7. So we'll see if we how much we can beat that by. When I first started with Nathaniel Cars, we did the Nathaniel MG Cup final this season up in uh, Kevinmouth, just outside Wrexham. And I took the MG5 up there, which was a lovely drive. Really enjoyed driving it up there and back. But I didn't feel like I was getting the most out of the EV. So what I think I was going wrong looking back was probably driving it too much like a petrol car. So what little changes in my driving habits are you looking for me to make here? So really, it's, it's more about reading the road ahead gentle acceleration so just because an EV can accelerate quickly doesn't mean you have to you can drive it just like you drive a fuel car so it's all about getting up to speed gently and trying to maintain that speed so looking at the road ahead so you're going into roundabouts at the correct speed rather than having to use the real physical brakes versus the regen as you can see now we're coming up to this roundabout so what you need to do really is sort of look you've, you can see the lights are now about to change to green so the idea is to drift into it so try and judge it so you don't have to come to a total stop and then slowly filter on. But there, so you were a bit bit hard on the throttle, so yeah. it's all about kind of be a bit gentler on the throttle. That's maybe where I've been going wrong in my uh, in my petrol car driving years, is foot down and, yeah, and so off we go as soon as the light turns green. Yeah, now see, so keep try and keep momentum up here because we're not going to stop. We're just going to drift in and then slowly, so you haven't gone from a complete stop to move in again, which takes a lot of energy to get the vehicle in motion again. Off camera, you were talking about the difference between 70 mile an hour and 60 mile an hour on a motorway. So like, how does that work and like why, so I'm aiming now for 60, yeah. why is that so much better? So basically when you, your car's cutting through the air, that takes a lot of energy, but it's not totally linear. Yeah. So that it takes more energy the faster you're going. So that 10 miles an hour difference can make a lot of difference to your efficiency. And that can mean, you know, it doesn't make a lot of difference to your journey time, but yeah. basically you could be even quicker because say your journey is 200 miles. Say you did it at 70, your car did 180 miles, but at 60 did 220 miles. You've got that difference by over a mile. You'll be quicker because your journey might take you five, six minutes longer, but you don't have to stop to charge for half hour to actually get to your destination at the other end. So as you can see now, we started off on 170 miles range and now it's up to 180. So it's starting to learn that you're driving more efficiently and, go, and actually starting to give you more range. Nice, so we're up to 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which in a little bit of I'd say drizzle, the, the road is still dry, thankfully. But that's not too bad, is it? 3.6, we're, we're going the right direction. Yep, that's uh, getting there. It won't affect us yet because there's, it's surface water, as we've said before, is the big killer for range. But that would be the same in a uh, fueled car, wouldn't it? You know, cars generally take more energy to, to disperse water from, from tyres, and you would want to drive slower if there was a lot of surface water, especially on a motorway or a fast road you'd probably want to drive a little bit slower anyway, right? Yeah, just for safety reasons, because you do see some people on a motorway driving past like mad when there's loads of surface water. And there's only so much the car's safety systems can do, they can't actually account for it. You drive that badly. Good news, my miles per kilowatt hour is up to 4.2. So that's pretty decent for, I would still class myself as a bit of a novice when it comes to EVs. But obviously we're going to be coming off now and heading up to Cumbran, so very different sort of driving, I guess, coming yeah. through a town. 
something I noticed in Wrexham actually is probably where I fell down the most was, was around town. What can I do there to, okay. to improve? Again, round town, similar to coming off this slip road, you can see there's a lot of traffic around suits. Again, reading the road ahead, not trying to dart in and out of the traffic and just kind of letting the car naturally slow down. We've got to take the first exit on this roundabout, so I reckon this is as good a time as any to test it out. So I'm going to gently come off the throttle. So we are now in the minus percentage power figures. We're on regen and we are up to 4.3. I think this is a filter lane as well, am I yes, correct? Um, oh, it's a filter lane. Filter now just drift out, avoid the massive potholes that seem to be everywhere. Well, well, you know. Not a miracle worker, but how was that? That's it. So, as you can see, you've gained 0.1 mile per kilowatt hour. Get it. Overall, I'd take that. If, if you know, the only thing that's beaten me so far, or massively, is traffic lights. Well, that's everyone, isn't it? Everyone yeah. gets beaten by traffic lights as long as I'm improving. What would you give my score so far? I reckon we're about 75% of the way to the journey. What would you give my score so far? I don't know. You've been getting progressively better through the trip, so I'd probably say. Uh, Probably a high six, maybe a seven. A high six, well, we're off. Yeah, so now this is the thing, and then you notice you're a bit too heavy on the throttle again. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. racing away, you don't need to, just be gentle. But maybe, you know, a high six was quite a fair score after all then, because yeah. I, think I, I think I let myself down. Yeah, but as you can see now, look ahead, these lights have changed. Again, you try to need to try and judge that. So let it slow down, because you're going to have to stop anyway, potentially. But if you can avoid stopping by just slowing down, because you're not going to achieve anything apart from be stopped, you may as well just gently go through it and hopefully you can see they're amber, green, so oh, now we've done it without yes, stopping. please. So it's just about keeping that momentum as you go along. I don't and think I've ever had such a light right foot as this journey. I would be so proud of myself. I'm a totally different driver after this experience, I feel like. You know, with these techniques, you can actually drive more efficiently in any car and save resources. So yes, an EV is much better for the planet because you use less energy, it uses less resources. But actually, by driving efficiently, you can save even more because you're not using as much energy. And as you can see, we're now at the MG dealership. So we're at Cumbran and we have a grand final score of 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. So, room for improvement, Kev, but what's my what's my final rating? I'd say there's um, possibly a seven now. There were a few little roundabouts where you kind of missed it and you could have slipped out on them and filtered in. And it's just more time in things like traffic lights and just reading the road ahead and you're still a little bit heavy on the acceleration. But then you've improved, you know, when we picked this car up, it was saying 3.6 and now it's saying 4.1, which is a massive improvement. Definitely a, a good trip. Yep.